Oh, you know, every weekend we have the most amazing tomato soups. I don't know what your weekend lunches are all about, but ours are usually like a grilled cheese tomato soup kind of a thing. The kids love it. John and I love it. Well, you might consider this blasphemy because it's not summer right now and our heirloom tomatoes are not growing in our garden. But I can't help myself, even in the winter, I have to buy tomatoes and I have to make this unbelievable soup. This is a rustic roasted tomato bread soup. If you've never heard of that, it is very, very um, a traditional Italian yummy succulent soup. And it is so no brainer to make. The cool thing about it is you start it right away in the morning. And this is a great weekend thing to do because um, the tomatoes, I like to slow roast them, you know, for a good, um, to be honest with you, I like to go a good three or four hours. And while that might sound really long to you guys, it's so incredible because your house, first of all, will never smell better. It's just incredible. And what you're roasting is all these gorgeous tomatoes. You can see I've got all sorts of tomatoes, plum tomatoes, whatever you can find, any heirloom tomatoes that you can find. And again, if it's summertime and you're able to grow them, get out in your garden. I've got grape tomatoes on here. I even threw Kalamata olives on here, whatever kind of olives you can find. So then I just, uh, you know, roughly cut an onion in here and just, I mean, this is fast, guys. You know, throw that on. So fast that your ice won't start watering when you're cutting it. Um, and I love to throw, you know, anything like leeks. I love leeks in this. Um, a couple of leeks are perfect. And you know, if leeks aren't something that you guys are used to using, they're one of my favorite, favorite things. Their taste is so subtle and wonderful. What I do with them is I usually um, will cut them right down the center. And then you can see there's usually dirt down in between them. So um, I'll just give them a quick rinse just to get that little bit of dirt, um, just a quick spray, and all it does is just kind of push that dirt right down out of them. If you wanna just soak them in a bowl of water for a second, that's fine too. And then again, I'll just give these just a really you know, rough cut. So the thing is, the leeks, um, they usually get dried out, and even though it's a 275 degree oven, um, they can get dried out. So what I try to do is I hide them underneath the tomatoes, and you'll find then they just get all soft and wilty and perfect. So just try not to have any of the leeks poking up out of the top, because they're just better hidden under the tomatoes. Um, I use a couple of um, heads of garlic, and all I do is literally cut the top off, and I leave the whole... Um, garlic, it looks like my oven is ready. I leave the garlic whole like this and I just set it right on here so that when I'm ready to squeeze the garlic out, it just kind of comes right out very, very easily. So I just do two of them right on the top. Instead of taking the time to, you know, peel them and all that business, there's no point. <laughs> just do that. So look how beautiful this is already. I mean, it's so colorful and healthy and wonderful. Um, as far as shallots go, um, I love a couple of shallots in the mix as well. I just think they're great. I don't do much of anything to them, but um, you know, roughly cut them. Again, I love the subtle taste of shallots. And since this soup is so, um, you know, it's rustic, and that's what's great about all these wonderful earthy flavors when you're roasting them together. Oh, they just create the most amazing aroma and taste. So you can see with the shallots, I just give those a rough cut as well, just throw them into the mix, and they will become all just, you know, perfectly wilty. So you can see my mix is just very yummy. So basically you need enough tomatoes to kind of fill your um, sheet pan. And then all I do, guys, is um, I salt it pretty well. If you've never slow roasted tomatoes, a lot of time, ooh, my eyes are watering a little bit from the onions. <laughs> um, a lot of times, um, when you quick roast something, um, it, it will get sweet, but not quite the same amazing, um, rich flavor that you get from slow roasting. And I always give a hearty dose of pepper. Okay, you can see. And then I really like to coat these babies with olive oil because I also think that that is just incredible. And the oils will end up going in the soup and they just add that extra yummy, delicious flavor. Really coat the top of your garlic too with your olive oil to make sure that they don't dry out at all. I just really pour it on top. It kind of looks like a lot of oil, but you know, you'll kind of you'll kind of get the feeling as to where you're going with this thing. And then kind of just, you know, move it all around. Make sure everything's coated nicely. Like I said, don't forget, kind of tuck the leeks under everything. 
and then put it in the oven. So like I said, if you're doing this on a weekend, do this Saturday morning or Sunday morning, pop it in the oven a few hours later before lunch, you are gonna be ready to have the most amazing soup. So let me throw this in the oven and then we'll keep going. Okay, so, oh, the tomatoes are so beautiful. Hang on. And, uh, oh my gosh, okay, you guys have to check this out. Look how beautiful and glossy and wonderful they are. Um, so you can tell the way you can really, you know, like I said, three to four hours. I tend to even go toward the four hour mark. You're not gonna ruin these, but look how nice and soft and amazing. Okay, just what, and you know, they're not, you can, at 275, they're not that hot, but mm, and they're so sweet. I mean, they're incredible. And you can tell if you need to add a little bit more salt or whatnot. So at this point, I'm going to take all of this beautifulness. First of all, your garlic, Mm, oh my gosh, you're so good. Just take your garlic and literally gush it out. I don't know if you guys ever do this, but oh, garlic like this is so incredible. I mean, if you've got a big chunk of bread next to you, go get it. Or if you've got one in your pantry, go get it and smear some of this on it. Oh, it's amazing. It's just the most delicious thing. Plus, then you, you haven't spent all your, <laughs> you haven't spent your whole morning, you know, pulling those little pieces of garlic out of their shells, but it just basically creates you know, you can see this garlic paste, which is just, you know, it's incredible. Mm, and it's sweet, and it's so perfect. And this way, when, I'm gonna throw this in my um, food processor for a second. It's just ready to go. You know, just make sure you don't get any of your little, um, the garlic papers stuck in there. You don't want the garlic papers. That doesn't taste good. No one wants to eat that. All right, so give a little lick to your fingers and you are ready to go. All right, so listen, if you don't have a food processor, no big deal. I happen to be in love with mine. Got my own little thing going on here with my food processor. But if you don't have one, that's all right. Just, um, you know, you don't have to do this part. I think it's quite wonderful to give the whole thing, ouch, hot, a little whirl in the food processors so just kind of get it all in there all that gorgeousness look at how yummy it's so beautiful and the smell ah oh, when are we going to be able to smell things through the camera <laughs> man because i just know if you guys could smell this you'd be making it for dinner tonight i'm pretty sure you can make this for dinner tonight anyways somehow i feel like i'm getting to know you guys pretty well and those of you who live in those of you who live in those uh, warmer areas where you're actually growing things right now, just, just know that I'm a little jealous of you. All right, so just give it a quick whirl, like I said. Not too much. That is all that I think I wanna do. I'm just gonna poke around in here a little bit and just kinda see. Yeah, because you know, mm, how much more tasting could I do with you guys? But you know, you can see, I didn't, puree it like crazy. I mean, what could I have just done? Maybe 15 seconds at the most. I mean, that was hardly anything. Get your blade out of there so you don't cut your finger. And then mm -hmm, I'm gonna just dump it in my big yummy pot, okay? And so you can see about what I've got going on here. Then guys, what I do is I take about three cups of chicken broth, okay? Just dump that in. Yum. And I turn this on for a little while. Let me get you going, darling. All right, my love. Ah, oh, and it just smells good. And so what I'm gonna do now is I get this going, then I take um, some basil. And again, if it's growing fresh in your garden right now, I am so jealous. So go out there and pick some. Um, otherwise, get on over to the grocery store and buy some. Um, if you guys don't grow herbs in your gardens or if you don't garden at all, certainly consider some herbs because, oh, it's the greatest thing when you cook, when you can go outside and grab a handful of beautiful herbs. So this is just basil and I, I literally just roughly tear it. And then I let this go just um, for a little bit. Now, um, the other thing in the meantime that I've done is um, you need uh, about a half a loaf of a rustic bread. Um, and even if you can find one of those like rosemary type breads or something like that, or like a garlicky kind of a thing, you know, those are great. Cut it open, let it sit out. If you don't have time to let it sit out the night before, then by all means, throw it in the oven on a cookie sheet, let it dry out at, you know, 300 degrees for, you know, 12 minutes or so. But you can see this stuff is, you know, fairly dried out. 
A lot of people slice it. I prefer it in big chunks like this. I tend not to take my rustic tomato soup to the mashed place. I like it when you can actually have a little texture. Every bite you're taking, you kind of get a little bit of the bread and everything like that. So at this point, I literally dump my bread in. So I just want you guys to see how very, very beautiful this is. You know, these big chunks of bread going in here. And you'll get a feeling for about how much you want, but you want a fair amount of it because this is, after all, called roasted tomato bread soup. And that's what's so great about it is, you know, you get all that great, see, I'm gonna put all these in here. So that was about, that's about three quarters, half to three quarters of um, a loaf. And just kind of allow that to um, sit down in here for a good 10, 15 minutes until, you know, the bread starts to kind of all apart and it's got all that wonderful tomato soaked up into it and you'll be able to tell some of you will like it a little bit more mushy and some of you will like it a little bit more like me where it's there's still got that little bit of like uh, that you can bite into it so we're gonna let that go for a little bit and then you and I darling are gonna have the best taste of tomato bread soup okay so now I'm just taking a peek in here and I want you guys to see how unbelievably beautiful this is so you can see I've, I've let this sit here for about 10 minutes you may want to go a little bit longer I did add a tiny little bit more broth I am going to add just a little bit more salt because you know I tend to like things with a lot of flavor and I just want to give it a taste and see but you can see the bread you can still see the chunks and everything like that and traditionally um, you know, it's not made like that in Tuscany, um, but I love it this way. I just think it's so textural and amazing. So let's give her a taste and just see. Hot, hot. Mm-hmm. Mmm. On the basil. Yum. Ooh, that was kind of some good opera. <laughs> maybe when I'm cooking with you guys and doing opera, maybe my voice is actually going to get better. Imagine that. Imagine me not being tone deaf at a certain point. Okay. Mm. All right, now let's have a taste together. All right, so hello, beautiful. Look at that. Oh, my darling, soup, beautiful soup. Do you guys know where that's from? Soup, beautiful soup. Alice in Wonderland, how pretty is that? Okay, then get yourself a trunk of Parmigiano Reggiano and just put it on the top because it's going to make it so great. And I just use my... Um, you know, my peeler, and then I just put a few luscious little pieces on there. I kind of like a few extra ones because I think it's so good. And then they melt into the soup. Mm -hmm. Yummy. Okay, so let's have a bite together, shall we? Let me get all my junk out of the way here. Oh, look at this gorgeousness. Mmm, and you can see, look at there's a big chunk of bread, and that's what's yummy. And then you can kind of like get in there and have a little bit of the bread, and you can see the olives, and I know you can smell it. Mmm, again, this is another one you're gonna want to bathe in. Mmm, it's so good. You don't even need a sandwich with this, you just need your sweet self and a really big spoon and a gorgeous Saturday or Sunday afternoon. Mmm, I know you're gonna love this one. <laughs>